Let's talk about the London Knights are. I fucking hate. I despise with all my heart the London Knights are Amy Yami. Amy Lammy, Amy Yami, whatever her fucking name is. Amy Lammy. I fucking hate her. So if you don't re- if you don't recall, a few years ago, when um what's his name? Um the mayor of London, Imran Khan, whatever his fucking name is, um because sorry, Sadiq Khan, not Imran Khan, so became mayor in 2016. He um appointed this role called the Night Czar. And I think there's a few cities around the world that have them. I think Amsterdam has one. I think New York has one. And the idea behind the Night Czar is that you advocate for like the nightlife industry. And of course, if you live in like Amsterdam, you live in New York, you live in London, all these big bustling metropolitan cities, the nightlife economy contributes a lot to the whole, you know, GDP, to the whole money made by that fucking city. And I think in London is somewhere in the billions, the nightlife industry. In the, even though we don't have clubs open till late, the fact that, you know, nightlife probably includes restaurants, nightlife includes probably theatres, nightlife will probably cause bars and cocktail bars and pubs and shit. It all kind of, you know, is smushed in there. And obviously, like, you know, concert halls and shit. Um, London's become like a prime destination for that, even though we're not the best night city in the world. I don't think so, because most of the events you want to go to, or most good events, you know, end before like 12. And if you stay out after three, there's not a lot of transport to get back home. It's a bit shit. Regardless, she put her in charge. And the annoying thing about it is that when the nights are for London was put in place, I first didn't understand it because if I'm not mistaken, this lady is like Canadian or like American or something. She's like, that's her accent anyway. I'm sure she's a British citizen, but she's not even like from here in that respect. Not to be that kind of guy because I'm not really from here either, but you kind of get me. I didn't really, I didn't really get the fact that she even got the job. She's not really involved in the nightlife industry. She says she used to like do like club nights in like some shit pub somewhere playing fucking synth pop. Like no one gives a fuck. No one knows her, right? She's not really like in the club scene. No one loves you at all, which is odd because I think the Amsterdam night stars or the ones in Paris or I think New York were all people that were involved with the nightlife scene. People that run clubs, people that had run fucking big parties, people that were part of fucking agencies, like people that actually plugged in to the fucking industry were involved. Whereas this woman is just like some wanna some wannabe politician, activist, person like nonsense. So I didn't understand in that regard. Then she gets a job and she's ineffective. The whole time she's been in a job, she's been making a crazy, crazy high salary, right? Absolutely doing nothing for the city apart from allegedly making it a 24 hour city, which she can't really take much credit for. Um the saving of fabric, which I honestly don't think she can take much credit for. But outside of that Absolutely nothing has been done, yet she's claiming a hundred thousand plus salary and she only works like three days a week or something like that. Fucking insane. So she's getting a lot of criticism, a lot of pushback online because of her ineffective ability to kind of do her job and the fact that she's a waste of space. And I personally want to know when is Amy Lammy going to lose her job? Because she's had a job since 2016. Is her job tied to Sadiq Khan's mayorship? And also, how long does a mayor stay in fucking charge in London? Don't we have elections? Don't they have to like end? Is it like a prime, is it like a president or prime minister thing where after two terms you have to kind of get out? Why is he still here? 2016 and that nigga's still fucking here. Knife crime is still fucking high. Robbery, all this shit is still high. London's fucking a mess. Homeless people everywhere. Shit all over the floor. Dogs fucking running riot. Like why the fuck? Why the fuck is Sadiq Khan still here? And why is Amy Lammy still here? Why are these two bozos still here in this job? It doesn't make any fucking sense. It's super annoying. So... She tried to defend herself online or via um, a fucking video that she did interview with BBC where she tried to fight a corner about what she's done and she was just waffling, absolutely waffling. So let's actually play the clip here because I think the clip kind of speaks to why I was so annoyed when I fucking saw this fucking news, right? So this is Amy Lammy on BBC Politics talking about all the great work she's done. Now look at her. Look at the difference between Amy Lammy. You see the picture that I showed you, right? On Mixmag. Look at the difference between what she looks like there and look at her now, because you can tell the stress is getting to her. You can tell this woman's stressed out. She's like fighting for her life because no one likes her. She's fucking stealing a living. She doesn't earn her salary at all. Um, terrible at her job. Very little to show for what she's done. Her KPI, if, if she had KPIs, she wouldn't meet any of them. Fucking useless girl. So watch. look at what she looks like now. Look at what she looks like. She looks fucking haggard a bit more about your role mm. how it works and the impact that you've managed to have mm. well uh so i was appointed in 20 look, she's getting bold look at her she looks haggard like she looks way older don't give her a choice i know but look she's developing a bald spot and everything like the job is really really doing a number on this lady like she's aged like a fucking avocado absolutely wild um 
Listen to her. Listen, listen, listen to this waffle. Listen to this waffle. 2016 um, by City Khan, Mayor of London, to help London thrive as a 24-hour city. And that means that I'm able to work with all 33 local authorities. We can't forget the City of London. They're super important to us uh, to help plan better for our nighttime. And so we're seeing results now. Uh, I have to say we inherited an absolute mess from the previous mayor. Uh, we had lost uh, a total... You see that? We have to do a lot of good jobs, uh, good work. And we we, we 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 fucking inherited a mess. No, bitch. Tell us what you did. What did you do? Stop deflecting onto the we don't we don't even remember who the fucking previous mayor is. We don't even know who that fuck that person was. Talk about the stuff that you did. What have you achieved for London? Tell us what you've done. Fucking hell, bro. Politicians or these people they they're fucking useful. And again, this isn't even like a a big politician job. This is just like advocating for nightlife. Do you know what I mean? Being the um, advocate for fucking clubs and shit and representing them when you, when, when, you, when you go to whatever meetings that you fucking go to. You know, talking for their best interest. Representing them. Be able to put a kind of in political, nicey, nicey spin on stuff. Like, is it really that difficult to do? Come on, bro. Total of 35% of our grassroots live music venues, 50% of our nightclubs, and a whopping 62% of our LGBTQ plus venues under the previous mayor. So we've had to pick up that mess, and the mayor and I have been focused have on done, stemming then? those closures and helping, uh, helping venues to not just survive, but thrive. See those kind of taglines? Not just survive, but thrive. What does that fucking mean? Demonstrate. Dem you know, fucking demonstrable. Gah! She's fucking shit. And how are you doing that? How are you helping? Yeah, exactly. How are you doing so that? one way is through better planning. Um, so just this week, for example, uh, Camden Council passed their nighttime uh, strategy uh, at full council, which was... A that condescending, that teacher thing, that, uh, are you okay? Need something to drink? Oh, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, like, fuck off with the fucking overexpressions, man. Just talk. What have you done? I've done this, 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 and this, and this. In the next three months, we're going to do this, this, and this, and this, and this. We're working on this, this, and this, and this. The proof machine was a mess. Get out of here, man. A really exciting moment because it means that we're turning the tide. We're starting to plan for our nighttime rather than over-regulating for it. Um, my it's already over-regulated. Relationships with the boroughs is super important. It isn't great. And, and, you know, that's been seen through the work we've been doing with nighttime enterprise zones, for example, in Bromley, in Woolwich and in Vauxhall, enabling our high streets to... London Enterprise. What the fuck does that mean? Why are all the clubs closed before 1 a.m.? Why can't you go anywhere and club after fucking 4 a.m.? Why are all the clubs fucking closing? Why do all the clubs that we have have to open at fucking 12 Drum sheds. All these, why are all these places popping up that only open from fucking 12 p.m.? Those are the new ones that are fucking available. Why do we have 10,000 capacity clubs, but not a lot of 500 capacity under capacity fucking places to go play? Why? Why isn't there a fold in every fucking, you know, side of fucking London? Why doesn't that exist? Why is there only one fold? And even now, if it gets into a bit of trouble or God forbid something bad happens to it, most likely the license gets taken away and the opening times get fucking reduced and it's back to fucking square zero. Come on, bro. Thrive after 6 p.m. And we've seen footfall spend and feelings of safety go up. But I'm also super proud, particularly this weekend, you know, when we're all thinking about Sarah Everard and her family and friends. No, come on. Sarah Everard? R.I.P. to that young lady who passed away, who got, not passed away, who got fucking murdered by that psycho fucking cop. How dare you? How dare you try and mention her name in this shit? You see how egregious, how fucking scummy, how scummy these politicians are. What, what next? Oh, as our force extends to the people in Gaza. As our force extends to the people in Congo. How, what, is, what the fuck does that have to do with fucking London and what we're going through now? What are you trying to use? What are you trying to use? What are you trying to, what are you trying to fucking use? That fucking tragedy that happened to that young lady who got fucking murdered by a fucking police officer. And don't get me started on that shit with the police covering up that sort of nonsense, right? Super sad fucking story. Jogging, out, doing her fucking... I think she was jogging. I think she was coming back from home. But regardless, super fucking... You know, tragic fucking story. Murdered by a fucking police officer, right? And now you are using this as some sort of what? Fucking shield to defend yourself from people like myself questioning why you still have that job despite you not doing anything close to what you should be doing to having that fucking role. Especially when you compare it to the other, the other cities. All the other night czars in the other cities around London, or sorry, around the world, are doing a far better job than she is. 
She's fucking pathetic, man. Disgusting. Sarah Everard. Wow. Um, of the work that the mayor and I have done around uh, women's safety with our Women's Night Safety Charter, 2,100 organizations um, and businesses across the capital that are signed up, pledging to take action Hi. to make our city safer at night for women and girls. And that includes cow. everything from 24 hour gyms to our nightclubs uh, through to the seven. What other 24 hour gym do we have in London apart from Pure? Please tell me. What other 24 hour gym? What other one? 24 hours a day, whatever one, whatever branch of 24 hours. Premier League football clubs okay. here in London. You don't actually have any powers to enforce any of your suggestions, do you? Does that hamper really the work that you can do and the impact that you can have? Well, I think it's important that I have really good relationships with the boroughs. Um, and so that is, you know, our, our power. Relationship with the boroughs, bro. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, really depend on. Is that why fucking Kings and High Street has been fucking decimated? What relationship with the bar? What, what relationship do you have with Hackney? Sorry, Hackney. What relationship do you have with fucking Hackney? What's the relationship? Oh, okay. Close all the clubs. Open as many fucking cocktail bars as you want. As many restaurants. As many fucking dumb natural wine stores as you want. As many flower shops. Open them all. But all the clubs are fucking gone. Why has it happened on Kingsland Road? That's that whole strip has been fucking decimated. It's been gutted out. And that was one of the most popping places. But even Shoreditch had been fucking decimated. It's not even fun to go out there no more. There's not nothing there anymore. What's all the good, what's all the cool clubs? Don't exist. Come on, bro. Partnership working. And that's the most powerful thing that we have here in London. And how big is your team, your budget? So we have yeah, a team the money. Let's of the just money. four people um, and uh, a pretty small budget uh, within a pretty the small culture budget. You get paid a hundred grand a year. Um, team. But what's most important is that we really over deliver for, for. Oh my God. You don't over deliver. You don't even deliver. You don't even fucking deliver, bruv. You are, what's that fucking postal service? You are every. She's fucking every, bro. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, file for a fucking refund. You know, you, you don't even arrive. You don't even arrive, bro. It's like ordering something from fucking AliExpress. Flick of a coin if it's going to arrive or not. Come on, man. Get out of here, bro. Over deliver. You don't even deliver. Um, for the money that we are actually how, allocated. How do, you, how do you value that? How do you... Yeah, how do you measure how do you, how do you measure, assess how do you your measure delivery how in you terms of it? the budget that yeah, you have? Yeah, well, one way is oh, the uh, the assembly are able to scrutinise me. And this the is assembly. one of the issues that was brought up. And actually, the assembly... Um, look at them uh, looking at her. <laughs> look at them looking at her. Look at them looking the at her. that was brought up. And look at them looking at her. <laughs> look at them looking at her. You see, I'm not the only one. Look at them looking at her. Look at them. Oh, she's chatting shit. She's fucking waffling, mate. What the fuck did she just say? Look at them. Look at their faces. Uh, what? It's like when somebody hasn't done the homework or hasn't done the research and presenting at school. Look at them looking at her like, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> She's chatting out of her fucking ass. Actually, the assembly um, have asked 181 questions um, about my work and since the mayor was last elected. And you need so, a million questions. You know, we operate. Or the same question. Get out. Get fired. Leave. That's what the question that you need. When will you leave? When are you going? Get out of my fucking house. So someone comes to stay over, obviously they say welcome. Hey, what's going on, man? Where are you going? You can't be staying here. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Come on, bro. You obviously said you're welcome, man. Everyone's gone. The drugs are run out. There's no more drinks. The shops are all closed. Come on, man. Get a move on. Get the fuck out, man. Go back to not in here with your fucking girlfriends, bro. Don't, 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 go away. Uh in full transparency uh, and always very happy to share right, right. any information with the assembly. Yeah, you're paid, what, just under 120,000. <laughs> it's a substantial amount. Is that substan super substantial? Super substantial. 120 grand and you don't even do the job of, like... It's a really, it. it's a really big job. It's <laughs> she's justifying it. She thinks she earns. She thinks she's justified with that salary. It's a really big job. It requires a big salary and a big girl. <laughs> Fuck off. It's a really big job. We're a city of nine and a half million people. And, you know, and I can point to the successes. You know, saving mouth. fabric was What's the first thing that I did as nights are. What do you do at fabric? What do you do at fabric? Keep a club open. That's one of the worst in London. Where people die like every other fucking month on the dance floor through fucking cat overdoses. Keep a club open that most people don't want to go to because it's a fucking rancid club with fucking overzealous, over fucking physical, over touchy security guards, a fucking entry system that reminds you like you're going to go visit your fucking 
you know, friend that got locked up in Belmarsh with the way you have to go up and down and search and take this and stuff. Like, good sound system, decent lineups, but terrible fucking club. Oh, you kept Fabric open. Woo-hee. Oh, we, we, we're, we're so fucking happy that Fabric is still around. Ah, establishment London. Fuck off, bro. Fuck off. You know, we recently got drum sheds open in the former IKEA. Oh, drum sheds. The 10,000 capacity venue that's probably financed by fucking local politicians that people are probably getting brown paper bags allegedly under the fucking table for. A, a fucking venue that is probably going to host Toyota fucking, you know, um, marketing events and shit. Like, come on, bro. It's probably subsidized, subsidized by fucking record labels and shit. Fuck off, bro. Drum sheds. Drum sheds. Come on, man. The, elect the, electricity, the electricity bill for drum sheds alone could probably w run an entire borough. The electricity bill for drum sheds alone could run a fucking entire fucking borough. Fuck off, drum sheds. Up in North Ele London. Fucking tw Who's going to rave at 12 in the, in the afternoon? Who you fucking take me for? Some fucking teenager to go rave at 12. What time am I waking up then? What time am I do my first bump? I'll do my first bump at 10 a.m. in the morning like a fucking, like a, like a fucking nitty. You maybe to take a pill at 11 in the morning to go rave at 12 p.m. At my age, are you serious? Who do you think I am? Drum sheds. I'll give you a drum. As well as funding 600,000 pounds for our grassroots live music venues here in London. So all of this, you know, is, is going to change the, the way that London operates at night. We are a truly 24 hour city. No, we're not. That's a lie. We're not a 24 hour city. We're not a 24-hour city, especially if you live in a different part of East. Like, if you, depending on what part of East you live is wherever or not you're a 24-hour city or not. So, by definition, we're not a 24-hour city. Number one, we don't even have 24-hour clubs. There's no venue, I don't think, in London that you could go to for 24 hours, except for a casino. And who the fuck wants to go and drink and get fucking high in a brightly lit CCTV, 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 CCTV covered venue with loads of people walking around in little fucking waistcoats. Like, who wants that? Who the fuck wants that? I don't give a fuck about gambling. Don't give a fuck about casinos. I don't want to go there. Terrible music, horrible people, shitty drinks. No. There's no place you can go for 24 hours in London. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Apart from if you want to go to Pure pure gym and just sit on a weight machine and play your fucking music through your headphones that's probably it maybe people do that maybe people are, are impure getting it on putting their music in a fucking sound system raving and getting fucking fucked up i don't know but there's no way you can go apart from pure apart from maybe pirate studios where else can you go for 24 hours in london out you can't it doesn't exist so she's talking out of her ass we've got 1.3 million people mm. who work in london at night and are doing really important jobs like working for the nhs like driving our buses stacking oh fuck off anyway fuck amy lammy honestly fuck amy lammy the quicker she gets out of that job the, f the better um i'm hoping that her job is tied with the you know london mayorship i think it is i don't think if the new mayor comes in they're gonna keep the same nights are but i'm hoping somebody else to get that job because she's fucking useless she's been stealing a living forever since 2016 making 100 grand per year and we've got nothing to show from it all of our best venues are closed all the new clubs that get open get fucking shut down the clubs that are available have to op operate in a fucking small tiny window of opening times it's fucking shit london nightlife is fucking garbage bro like, it's been decimated. It's been fucking gutted. It's been absolutely ripped to pieces. And I fucking hate it. I fucking hate it. Lack of options and shit. The only place you can go to is fucking Fold. And again, I love Fold. Love the team behind it. Love what they've fucking done. But it gets boring, bro. I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to the same place all the time. It gets fucking boring. Going to the same place all the time. Even though it's got the best sound system, the best community, the best ravers, the best fucking lineup. Blah, 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 blah. We know. It's amazing. But come on, bro. It's the same place every fucking weekend. Like, come on, man. Give us something else. Give us something new. Something fresh. But no. Every every nice new club. Shut down, 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 shut down. But guess what? Fabric stays around. Fabric with their fucking airport security team, they fucking stay around. Yeah, great. What a real credit to fucking London. Get fucking fucked. Anyway, returning back to the fucking article. The article itself on Mixmag, um, where some people criticized it, and we're going to read through for a little bit on it here. Um, in response to the claim, one Twitter user says, honestly, never felt more politically gaslit than have been told London is a 24-hour constantly. Exactly. Never have I felt more politically gaslit than being told this 24-hour city thing constantly. Exactly. Another person says, 
Anyone who says London is a 24-hour city doesn't go out in London. Exactly. It's not a 24-hour city. In some places, you can't get back home on public transport. You can't. In some places, you just can't get back on public transport. You have to walk a certain distance. What 24-hour city are you talking about, bro? Come on, man. They've done some good things with the night tube, don't get me wrong. I think the night tube has definitely helped a lot of people, especially women in London, because I think like a lot of women probably couldn't go out in parts of like central London if you live like in east or south or north. It's a bit difficult to get back home. And if you didn't have money for the cab or enough money for the Uber, because nowadays as well, the Uber's prices have gone up as well. Um, you know, whatever um, recession we're in, Uber prices are now not that dissimilar from like a, a cab price. So a cab price from like maybe central London all the way to like trendy parts of East might cost you 50 pounds, 60 pounds, same sort of thing on Uber. It doesn't really, you know, it's not much difference. So people can't really afford that sort of stuff after paying for your entry, paying for your drinks. It just becomes a 500 pound night. It's not, not necessary. So the night tube has been a really good introduction because at least with a night tube, some of the main lines in the underground can take you to most of your main points. So you can get from like, Oxford Circus to Bethnal Green, which is super important because at least even if you don't, even if you live in Mile End, you can walk to, you know I mean, it's a little bit easier than going from fucking Oxford Circus to Bethnal Green on a bus or something. Absolutely horrid. But apart from that, venues are all decimated. Like most of them don't open that. The ones that are around don't open that long. Um, crazy fucking laws around noise pollution and shit. So they can't put the music as loud anyway. Like terrible sound system. Like just like, yeah, like get out of here, man. Honestly. Um, another one says, um, one Twitter user highlights in 2018, councillors approved the licensing policy in Hackney that all new venues in a borough must exactly... Do you remember this? This was one of the worst things. That's This is what killed the strip in, in Hackney. That strip in Dawson, this is why it got killed. One Twitter user highlights in 2018, councillors approved the licensing policy that Hackney for all new venues in a borough must follow a core closing hours. The curfew for new venues in London, in Hackney, sorry, are midnight on weekends. And 11 p.m. during the week. What? what that's not a club. You, th that's why the Alibi had to shut down, basically. My fucking favorite club in the world, the place that I kind of, you know, g m fucking um, learned how to be a promoter, basically learned how to DJ, um, had been completely decimated because they kept pulling back the fucking opening hours. I think when I first used to go there, it was open until 4 then it went to like three, then it was two, then it was half two, then it was half two only a certain weekend, and then it became one, and then it was fucking done. Because those places, especially in Dawson, they only were popping around 11. Because usually, from what happened, what, from what I remember how I used to go out, not sure if it's different now, people would usually start pre-drinking from Liverpool Street. And if you don't know anything about London, you know, Liverpool Street and Dawson, it's all like one big road, one really long road, maybe like three miles long. But you start off at Liverpool Street because that's like the you know, the city-ish type area where all the fucking cocktail bars are. And then you kind of work your way up until you get to the clubs, which is a bit further down. But now there's no need to go further down anymore because they're all fucking gross. So, oh, God. Continues. The curfews for the new venue. Da, da, da. However, these times of extended if licenses can show the venue can cause no disruption to the area. Responding to the comments in the statement to Mix Mag, Lamy referenced the references, the challenges faced by the nightlife industry as a result of the pandemic and the rising rents and business. Bo, you weren't doing a good job before the pandemic comes. Now the pandemic comes, use the pandemic as an excuse. Then it's fucking Sarah Everett. Then it's fucking Gaza. Like what next? BLM. Fuck you, man. Take some personal accountability. Lamy referenced challenges faced by the nightlife industry as a result of the pandemic, rising rents, business rates, staffing shortages and the government's cost of living and cost of doing business crisis the mayor and i have continued to work closely on businesses the venues in barriers um london support them through the these challenging and last year's london's hospitality industry sales outpace the rest of the uk oh guess why because there's more of them here fucking statistics guess why they outpace it? because there's fucking more concentration of them you donut we know the challenges remain and we'll continue to do as well as we can to protect and support venues across the capital. Help new ones to open and work with the councils to make licensing agents and navigate. Support them and support the nighttime strategies to plan better for all aspects of night of life at night. All aspects of life at night. Fuck you, bro. We all we also continue to stand up for the free 1.23 in London is in work evenings and nights to ensure a better... Bro, we don't care. Don't try and think that you're being some sort of like altruistic, oh my God person. No, focus on the nightlife. 
Don't be like, oh, now we're looking for like, we're going to help out nurses and shit. Fuck you, bro. And to ensure better paying conditions as we keep the city working throughout the night. <laughs> the night lifestyle wrote a co op uh, uh, ed and independent in which she details that she's making difference in the nightlife industry. The 24 hour, um, the 24 hour city claim continues in her statement as she says London is the best. It's not a 24 hour city, though. This is a lie. It's not a 24 hour city. It's a fucking lie. If they mean 24 hour city, in that the transport stays open 24 hours, kind of, cool. But that doesn't mean it's a 24-hour city. You can't even... There's not a lot... Like, central London closes after, like, 1 a.m. What can you What can you go into at central London? An off-license? You can't even go to a Weatherspoon after 1. I don't think so. There's not many places open, even in central London, after 1. So what are you talking about, bro? Let me reference the, her instrumental role in securing the future opening of Surrey Keys. <sighs> Fuck... You're talking about, honestly, these 10, 5,000 plus capacity venue places. We don't care, bro. We don't care. We don't care. We need more 500 to 1,000 capacity venues. That's what we need in London. Way more of those venues. Even, I'd say, way more than under 500 capacity. We need more of those venues around, especially around the whole of London. Not just in fucking East or in South. We need them everywhere. So that, effectively, what that would do, in my opinion, if you have more folds around london it spreads the fucking it spreads the load it's you know for lack of a better term it kind of disperses all the demand and it kind of helps to ease all of the pain points so like all of the fucking antisocial behavior that occurs only in east can now be spread across london and maybe it'll kind of ease level of social behavior all of the fucking strains and stresses it puts on the you know public transport it can now help to spread out around the area it can make people explore new different places it may actually help to kind of bolster new areas or areas that have been a little bit down and dumps like how folders done to canning town there's a lot of people who would never have moved to canning town even though i'm from there my family lives there they would you know they would never have lived in canning town or, or custom house because it's a bit of a rough area but now because folds there and the studio's opening and it's cheaper rent blah 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 it helps to kind of bolster the local, local economy so all those things can help but again no it's just fucking drum sheds and fucking you know print work who the fuck cares about that who's moving next to print works and drum sheds come on man last year it was discovered that emmy lammy had scored a 40 percent pay rise from september 2021 <laughs> honestly this woman's winning she's so bad at her job but she still gets pay rises man honestly man it helps it helps to be fucking redax on it um she saw her salary go from eighty three thousand one hundred and sixty nine to one hundred thousand and sixteen crowns <laughs> in a fucking recession during a recession during a global pandemic her salary went up everyone's getting fired Everyone's having to downsize. Everyone's having to trim the fat, cut back on their expenses, move away, move jobs. Her salary gets increased. God damn it. Amy Lammy is a fucking G. Um, what's this person says? Um, this person says, Bruff. London 24-hour city. Shops aren't even open much longer than small towns. Exactly. Exactly. That's the depressing thing about when you go outside London. The depressing thing about outside London is that most places, I remember when I went to Hastings, when I went to Hastings, that was, that was one, that was a real shocker. When I went to Hastings to go visit my friend, I remember being a bit like perturbed because if I'm not mistaken, in Hastings or the type of areas, the pubs close like 10 or 11 p.m. So what the pubs do is that they'll have a drink promotion deal from like five to like seven to get people in early. So they know people are going to be out from work. So they want to get them in early to get loads of drinks to get fucked up and put money through the till. So they'll have like a half price drinks or two for one deal between five and seven. But then they'll close at 11. So you're going in there after work or whenever from like five to, to seven. You're getting fucked up on those discounted drinks. You then get kicked out of that pub at 11, already steaming. You still want to go out though. So then you go to the nearest club and the nearest club is guess what? How long that's open till? 1 or 2 a.m. So you have another short window and then those clubs also have deals in place where they say, hey, if you come to this club before 12, we can give you three for one, two, whatever. Da, da, da. So there's all these deals that are in place to get you in early. Then you end up drinking loads. And by the time you leave at 1 a.m., you are fucking smashed beyond smashed. And of course, antisocial behavior. Of course, a fucking mile long queue outside the fucking kebab shop because everyone needs to eat something to soak up all the booze. Like, of course, people pissing all over the street. You're, you you smell fucking urine in the air. All over the place. It's like, it actually creates, it's like a, it's like a domino effect because of all the closing times are so fucking cramped in. Which is why when you go to places like Berlin, 
is such a fucking breath of fresh air because everything's open until super late. Like you've got cocktail bars are open until 6 a.m. So there's no need to rush because you've got all the time in the world to drink and have a good time. So you kind of space it out a bit and you can kind of go to a club at 2 a.m. in the morning and still have a good time and leave at 8 in the morning if you want. That still exists. So it helps to kind of, you know, it helps to sort of like mediate or kind of level out your fucking raving so it's not all fucking like project x steamy 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 go obviously the sad thing about it is that on the flip side people do get lost in the source and they get a little bit crazy over there in berlin but i think that ability to kind of keep things a bit open like time wise allows people to kind of pace themselves a little bit better and i think in england we need that we need that we obviously we need that because as a country where you know i, I can contest or admit for myself you know when it comes to boozing and stuff once you get one in you're suddenly fucking just knocking them back. And you're not even enjoying the drinks. You're just knocking them back to get fucked up. That's the British, that's the English way. So we actually do need a little bit of a, a little bit of a flexible, open ended opening time to kind of get us back to drinking normally, like the Europeans do. Our continental neighbors don't drink like us. You go to Italy, you go to Spain, you go to France, you go to Germany. They take their time and they enjoy their drinks. They, they, they savor it. So you go to some bars, they have fucking glasses that are chilled. In London, you probably get most of your pints poured in the fucking plastic cup. God damn. Um, choose on a 24 hour. Everywhere has some kind of curfew. Nothing here is 24 hour. Exactly, exactly. Another person says, the mayor of London has turned off replies to this tweet for obvious reasons. London's 24 hour policy is a joke and no one's looking to it to invigorate their nighttime economy. Exactly. Another person says, wrote this to add to my, wrote, wrote this to add to my little relatively new voice to the discourse in London 24 hour city. The person says, Amy Lamy is not responsible for the decline of London City's economy, but as a purely advisory role, little to no statutory powers, the night is on needs three things to be more effective. Greater strategic oversight on licensing, flexible funding grants, and regular engagement with stakeholders. City Hall has delivered a few nighttime policies, some of them effective, but councils have the most powers, levers, and um, to affect the development of the nighttime businesses. Council licensing policies decide the fate of what venue can and can't do. Their waste planning culture economic development uh, blah, 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 blah. economic development policies can help nighttime businesses succeed or shut down but councils themselves are in a financial distress so in the absence of reliable funding a night czar needs to be radical engaged and a champion to all large venues guess what guess what daniel amy lammy isn't none of those things she's not fucking radical she's not engaged she's not a champion She's a fucking loser, a bozo. She needs to get out of the fucking job. There's no giving her notes to fucking do a better job. Get the fuck out. You're useless. Leave. Please, if you don't mind. Get the fuck out. Go back to Notting Hill. Go to fucking, I don't know, Tatty Divine offices and make some fucking plastic jewelry. Whatever you fucking do, get away. We don't fucking want you. You're fucking useless. That's the fucking name of the game. Okay? Aggie has spoken. Aggie has spoken. Okay? <laughs> that is the deal there. 